Welcome to my channel. My name is Lauren and I am self-converting my Ram Pro Master to live, travel, and work in full-time on the road. Hey there, I hope you are doing well. If you've been following along with my channel at all, then you know at the end of last year, I installed my entire electrical system start to finish, which included running a lot of pre-wires throughout my van, and then wearing this entire system in the bed box over my driver's side wheel well. In my last video, I took the time to explain how my system captures, stores, and uses power, and I briefly touched on the Victron Connect app and how to maintain your electrical system. So I will link those three videos in the description box below if you're interested in checking them out. But in today's video, I'm going to take the time to share some things you should consider before you buy your solar panels for your own DIY Gipper Van electrical install. With that, let's get started. Now I won't be covering sizing your solar array in terms of volts and watts, but if you're interested in that kind of information, I will link below the explorers.life website and YouTube channel where they have a lot of valuable resources to help you in that area, so go check them out. When you are looking at what solar panels to purchase, you will come across a lot of variations. So to start, I'm going to cover the two styles of solar panels, which are rigid solar panels and flexible solar panels. So here are some pros and cons of both options. Rigid solar panels have a metal frame and glass case to protect the solar cells from scratches, damage, and deterioration caused by the outside elements. However, flexible solar panels aren't as protected with the thin plastic covering that goes over the solar cells, which can be easily damaged and tends to delaminate over time, so rigid solar panels have a longer lifespan than flexible solar panels. Because of the rigid solar panel designs, they are thicker, heavier, and bulkier than the extremely thin, lightweight, and flexible solar panels. My rigid solar panels are about an inch and a half thick and weigh just over 20 pounds each. Whereas with flexible solar panels, they aren't even a quarter inch thick and can weigh as little as five pounds each. Therefore, flexible solar panels are more stealthy as you can't see them on the roof of your van and they are aerodynamic since they sit flush to your van's roof. Whereas rigid solar panels can be seen on the roof of your van and it's not as aerodynamic since it sits up off of the roof a few inches. Now when it comes to mounting your solar panels on your van's roof, rigid solar panels can be taped and screwed directly into your van's roof or you can add a roof rack that you attach the solar panels to. If you decide to mount your rigid solar panels with tape and self-tapping screws, the screws do add holes in your van, which may cause leaks or rusting down the road. And when you install a roof rack to attach your rigid solar panels to, that just ultimately means more money spent, more weight on your van, and the less aerodynamic that your van will be. Therefore, rigid solar panels can be more challenging to mount, to move, to replace, and to fix if needed. I don't even want to imagine having to replace one of my solar panels because I'd have to literally remove all three of them. Fingers crossed I don't have to deal with that. <laughs> On the other hand, flexible solar panels are quick and easy to install since they are thin and lightweight. You simply just tape them to the roof of your van and they stay. So a lot easier to move and replace or fix if you ever need to. Also, since flexible solar panels can be slightly bent without damaging the solar cells, that makes it perfect to conform to the slight curve of your van's roof. However, since the flexible solar panel sits flush to your van's roof, that means that there's going to be a lot of heat buildup and heat transfer that will occur. Heat buildup will slowly damage the solar panel over time, and it actually lowers the performance of the flexible solar panel by about 20%. Aside from heat buildup, heat transfer will also occur. So the heat from the solar panels is going to go right into your van and affect the climate of your living space. On the other hand, rigid solar panels sit up off of your van roof, meaning that there's little to no heat transfer or heat buildup around the solar panels, and that actually provides shade in your van. I've noticed after I installed my solar panels that the inside of my van is actually a little bit cooler since these solar panels act as shade the roof of my van and doesn't allow the sunlight that's hitting directly on top of my van to just go inside of my van. 
When it comes to efficiency, rigid solar panels are more efficient at capturing energy from the sun and converting it to power than flexible solar panels are. For individuals like myself who will be living in the van full time and running multiple things off of my electrical system, rigid solar panels would probably be the better option just so you can get every possible wattage that you can from the sun. In terms of cost, flexible solar panels are more expensive than rigid solar panels. Additionally, if you decide to use rigid solar panels, you can look into getting a tilting mechanism that allows you to tilt your solar panels and direct them towards the sunlight throughout the day to help them capture more power. Personally, I didn't install these because it would just be more weight, time, and money, and I didn't see myself using them coming up here throughout the day and adjusting my solar panels and tilting them. I'm very happy with the amount of sunlight that my solar panels already get just lying flat on my van. And also, if you do decide to go this route and install some tilting mechanisms, just a reminder to put them down before you drive away. That's something I'm sure I would forget about here and there and could potentially cause a lot of damage. <laughs> Now for flexible solar panels, you can also look into getting ones that are walkable. So these rigid solar panels, I cannot walk on them. I cannot put any weight on them without seriously damaging them. So I went ahead and installed a tiny roof deck up here, um, but the solar panels really take up a lot of the space on my roof. So to optimize your roof space, you can install these walkable ones so that they can also serve as a deck. Now, that will also make it easier to clean the solar panels. I'm sure that constant traffic on those flexible walkable solar panels will speed up the delamination and the wear and tear of the solar panel, but do with that information what you will, but it's a pretty cool feature. And lastly, there are portable and foldable solar panels. So instead of mounting them to your van's roof, you actually can store them in your van. The reason I did not go this route is because I didn't want to have to set up the solar panels every single time I wanted to capture power from the sun. It just felt like another added hassle. And also when you're out and around other individuals, I would just be afraid of maybe theft or someone messing with the solar panels. So I don't want to have to worry about babysitting the solar panels all day. And also if you do decide to go this route, remember to plan accordingly so you have a place to store them in your van. And when you leave, make sure you pack them up and you don't leave them behind somewhere. <laughs> so there are some pros and cons of going with either rigid or flexible solar panels. Here is a chart summarizing everything I just went over for you to pause and reference if needed. Another consideration when looking at solar panels is whether you want the monocrystalline version like I have or the polycrystalline version. Both serve the same function in capturing energy from the sun and converting that to power, but the monocrystalline is more efficient at doing so, therefore it's a little more expensive. However, the polycrystalline is less efficient and less expensive. So of course I would recommend the monocrystalline version. And lastly, solar panels can vary in volts, wattage, and their physical dimensions. Generally speaking, the larger the solar panel wattage, the larger the physical dimensions of the solar panel and the more expensive it is. But it is also more efficient than smaller wattage solar panels that have smaller dimensions are less expensive but less efficient. So in other words, a 200 watt solar panel is more efficient than a 50 watt solar panel and a 24 volt solar panel is more efficient than a 12 volt solar panel. That's because the larger solar panel wattage is going to capture more energy from the sun in the same amount of time and same sun exposure as a smaller wattage solar panel would. You can get solar panels in literally any wattage. There's 50, 75, 100, 200, 300, 400, and so forth. You can also get solar panels in 12 volt, 24 volt, and even 48 volts. A general rule of thumb is that you should have 200 watts of solar array for every 100 amp hour of battery in your electrical system. So I have a 400 amp hour battery bank, so that means that I should have 800 watts of solar. However, I only have 600 watts of solar. So although it's a good rule to kind of go by, you don't have to necessarily follow it. So make sure you're doing enough research to understand how to properly size your system. 
So hopefully this video gave you a better idea of things you should consider and research further before buying your solar panels. Be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss my next video where I will share things to consider before you buy your batteries. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. We'll be covering oh, how what is going on. But rigid solar panels have a longer lifespan, life and they are aerodynamic. Dynamic. Of course, I would recommend going with mono crystalline. <laughs> Hopefully, this video gave you. What am I trying to say? Oh my goodness gracious, Lauren! Dude, it's so windy.